Hello, I'm Matthew from Ludovox.fr and today I'm going to give you an overview of Kingdom Run. So Kingdom Run is a racing game for 2-4 to four players ages 7 and up and it plays for around 15 minutes. So in this game you play as a team of runners, even if you do not play with all 4 people, all 4 players, you're going to have 4 teams on the board. And this, this is because you can move other people's pawns. Everyone has four pawns, for example, in this case, in this example, I'm always going to be the red player. So you may notice that uh, we have three players here and the goal is to get the most victory points. You get victory points by basically moving uh, towards the finish line and um, by passing the finish line. Passing the finish line gives you more points than just moving around. You also get points by collecting coins. You start with a certain number of coins depending on the number of players and you may steal coins from other people. So on your turn you're going to roll dice and these dice are going to be uh, actions basically that you're going to take. You may roll some or any of them. Uh, for example, in this case I don't want the money bags, I'm going to roll all three of them. And once you have re-rolled once, you have to perform your actions. So let me show you the different sides of the dice. So we have the, uh, the boots. So the boot is basically a run you're going to make people run. I can take all or any uh, uh, pawns from one square and I'm going to lay them like in Mancala one by one. So for example in this case I may move by two spaces by placing a pawn before me. But I could have chosen to take all four pawns and then move them like this. You may notice that green is taking a dip in a pawn here. And the pawns on the board are very important because once you take a dip, you cannot go away from, from the, that uh, pawn. Except if you play the uh, water symbol. If you play the water symbol, you just move past the pawn. And this is great because the, this is the only way you move out of the pawn. You can also uh, use this uh, side of the die to move to the next pawn and this allows you to cover a lot of distance. So now, um, basically, that's it for the two basic movements, but you also have the grappling hook. The grappling hook is very important because it allows you to catch up. For example, in this case, uh, green could uh, catch up with the red. You catch up with the next player. But it can move you past pawns. So for example, in this case, if yellow uses the grappling hook, yellow can move there, and this is a big move. So if you want to move away from the mass, you expose yourself of getting hooked and of people getting back to you and back to your level. So um, this is the basic movement. So now we have other sides of the dice. We have the lulling potion. If you decide that um, a, a runner is going to be troublesome, you can use a lulling potion on that runner to make them asleep. So this prevents the runner from taking any action but drinking a lulling potion to go back to an awoken state. Finally, you have the money bags. The money bags allow you to steal a coin from an opponent. This means you get more victory points and they get less. This is strictly beneficial, but your coins are not in safety. They can be stolen at any time. Finally, you have the equal symbol. The equal symbol allows you to copy an action that you've already performed and this is very good because it gives you some flexibility. In this case, I may have two rolling potions, two money bags, or two boots, but I cannot perform the same action more than twice. So for example, if I had two money bags and one equal, I cannot perform three money bags. I have to perform two money bags and two boots. So this is the basic uh, run of the actions. You're going to take all four actions, then move to the next player, move to the next player, and so on and so forth until the end of the game. And the end of the game is going to happen when all of the spaces beyond the finish line are full. And you may notice that there are eight spaces. So it's quite long to, full, to fulfill because you have only four runners. It's not uh, a podium with three people, it's a podium with eight people. Obviously, if you get there first, you get the first dibs and you get the best points. So let me give you an example of how it could go if we have a, uh, an endgame. So here we have an endgame situation. I'm going to score points for my four runners and add the points for my coins. So to count the points from my runners, I'm just going to uh, count the points 
which are printed underneath my runners. So for example, 13, 12, and 9. And then for the runners who have not passed the finishing uh, the finish line, we have a checkpoint, checkpoint system. So you're going to score points according to the checkpoints, the last checkpoint that you've passed. In this case, I've passed the fifth point checkpoint, but not the sixth. So I win five extra points. Then I have the coins in front of me. I get points for them as well. Here, 10 points because every coin is worth two. So that's it. I sum everything up. I have my final score and the goal is for your team to have the best score. And you win if you have the highest score of them all. So as you may notice, this is a game about racing, but you have to permanently think about the other player's position and also about yours. Sometimes it's better to uh, get tempo, to steal coins or to lull people away, because sometimes you don't want people to move that fast. And sometimes getting there step by step is better than making a big push. Now you know almost everything about that game, so bye bye and see you on otherbox.fr.